Hello everyone and welcome to this week's garden tour. We'll not be doing any harvesting today, just walking around and looking at the garden. I did get the chance to do lots of work here in the plot this week, so after harvesting and the last garden tour, I came here and I decided to take away the poppies, or take out the poppies I should say. This trellis here now you see is empty and I have actually sold some beans. I will show that to you guys once I start walking around. I decided to take out the poppies because they were looking really sick. I wanted to save the pods and dry them, but they were just not looking very healthy. And I didn't really feel comfortable like saving seeds for something that was not doing well. So it's all right. I have extra seeds from the packs that I bought them from, I believe. And some exciting things happened in the backyard too. The sunflower opened and I'm excited to show you guys the color of it because it was a bit of a surprise to me, but we'll check on that once we take a walk over there. Now let's start in here. This is going to be a short one. I'm a little bit short in time today and this week. Other than taking out the poppies and some new blooms, there's not a lot of difference from last week. Other than just looking a little cleaner because I did get to do some weeding this week too, but I can already tell that lots of weeds already grew back, so it's an endless battle. But let's start checking out how everything's looking first. I'm just gonna walk back to the front and give you an overview on how things are looking as a whole. So without the poppies over there, things are looking a lot cleaner. I talked the ones over there and the arches too. So it's actually looking a bit bare, the garden right now. Obviously there's still lots of things growing, but I'm saying the poppies are really big and tall and colorful, but, but I think it looks good still. I love the way the snapdragons look over there, but let's check the back here first real quick. I cleaned up this area, so we have this wall now empty and the grapes are hanging out nice. So some of you suggested that I cover it with netting it's too much work for me, this is too big and the grape comes all the way to there. I don't really think it's feasible for us to actually come in and cover everything with netting. And there's a lot of grapes that go over there too. But anyway, what we want to do, what I'm thinking to do is to buy some more Gunza bags and just the large ones and put these grapes inside. Because while they're like this, the birds don't seem to eat them very much. Just when they start getting sweet, it's when they get like devoured. But we have so many. So the fig tree here. It's starting to put out some leaf growth, which is good. Before she was kind of going slow, we pruned it hard and seems to be responding well. And I'm trying to clean down here still. I put this here as mulch, I was thinking, and I put some mushroom spores in here because I was thinking to just, you know, try to get the soil a little bit healthier. But nothing has been happening. That's too dry anyway. So I might actually try to clean this up. And this side here, I took out the poppies too and some of the cosmos because they had powdery mildew on them. So now I kind of have a little space here that I could plant. I want to do a little planting before I go away because I want to have a nice garden for the fall, but I'm still thinking about that. Here on the yarrow, I think this one here is six, full of bugs. But they're actually, they're probably ready to harvest some at least. I have never really grown yarrow before. I, I believe they're cutting come again, but I'm not really sure. I read that I have to wait until all of the flowers are open before you harvest. So these ones seem to be good. Some of these guys still have some buds. So I might come here next week and take some. And here's where some other poppy used to be. So now it's a little bit empty too. And if you few, that one is fully open. So a little sad. I wanted to have that one for our little wedding, but I think it's too late. I'm gonna harvest them and see if they give another flush, but I don't think they do. So it is what it is. The sunflowers from Sunflower Steve are looking very nice now. You can see that without all that stuff in here, it's a lot easier to see the length of it. It's looking really good. Lots of them are budding and now we only have a couple weeks to go. So hopefully I will have some sunflowers by then. The pro cut look to be a lot farther ahead with the budding. I'll show that to you guys in a minute. First, let's look at the zinnia bed because I have a lot of blooms. And something interesting is happening here because I don't know what kind of zinnias those are. They're supposed to be the Queenie Lime series but that one looks like that it's double it looks like it this one too but i have some single ones there are i don't know in the beige peach kind of color so i'm gonna actually cut them out and um, try to see if i stimulate some more growth of the plant sometimes i've heard that the first zinnia blooms can come out a little weird like this and then they would be nicer last year they all came nice on the first away time just like these guys but we'll see these are from the giant, the Banner Giant series, and I think this is a purple one. It's looking purple, right? Yeah, so it was a mix, and I didn't know the color, so. And this is the first one to bloom on this bed, at least. Sweet peas 
<laughs> I just harvested, remember, you know, full of bees again. Now they're growing very fast and I have to keep coming here and harvesting this out. The bees are toxic, they're not edible. These are just grown for this fragrance and for cut flower for bouquets. So I gotta, if I wanted this to keep producing, I have to come here and do it and take out all these bees. I'll try to come in the beginning of the week. And here, the dahlia bed, we have a couple of them flowering. Let me go around to show you guys. I think I showed this last week too. This is the labyrinth dahlia. She is gorgeous. I think it's like a cafe au lait, but a little smaller and more into the peachy pink color, which I really like. And this one was open just a little before and it's kind of getting old kind of very soon. I thought she would open more than that, but I'm thinking this would be the perfect stage to harvest. Hopefully she will I'll have like one or two at least to put in my wedding, my, my bridal bouquet. But let me show you guys something else. So you see how this dahlia is all damaged? I hope you can see in the camera. The reason why I also want to put the organza bags and the grapes is because I want to buy them anyway to try to protect these dahlias. I really like to have some homegrown flowers in our little ceremony, but the way they're looking, they're just looking like they're getting damaged super fast. I don't use any pesticides or anything, so the garden has a lot of bugs, which is natural, but sometimes they can damage the flowers. And then this one's perfect right now, but it could have bug damage to the ones in my backyard are full of damage. So by next week, I'm going to start putting organza bags on the buds like this. So once he, when it starts budding, I'm going to cover with a bag. This one too. I have to be honest with you, I have been resistant to use those organza bags in the garden for the past three years because I think they're a little bit wasteful and I'm not sure how eco-friendly they are. So every time you guys suggest it, which happened a lot last year from tomatoes and etc. Et I just, you know, kind of let it pass by. But this time, because I do want to have some special flowers from the garden in the wedding, I have gave in and I think I'm going to buy them. Only one pack and I'm going to try to reuse them as much as I can. I don't want to be wasteful and throw them away without need to. And because the packs come with lots of them, I'm also going to use some on the grapes, you know and see how it goes but I don't know I feel a little bad about it but at the same time I think I should go ahead and do it okay now let's look at the sunflowers on this side here you see how much bigger these buds are compared to the ones from sunflower steve there are some smaller ones but some are getting really big which looks good to me hopefully they will be open in a couple of weeks and sunflowers hold well from what I read if you harvest them when they just start to open you could leave them inside in a cool dark place and they'll last a very long time and maybe I could harvest them before they open also to prevent bug damage leave them in my basement and just take them out before we go upstate to do the stuff for the wedding we'll see if it's gonna work out I'm kind of looking forward to cut them out and give some more space to these other dahlias here I have new buds on some of those and some are getting a little taller but that one specifically I am kind of worried and looks like it's getting a lot of bug damage by being there too so Hopefully she can handle a couple more weeks of shade and then I will let her have some space to breathe. And here I also cut that calendula that was growing here. I cut it pretty hard because she was looking like had a lot of trips on it. And you see here, not trips, sorry, the leaf hopper damage. See these like, little lines here on the leaves and also some powdery mildew. So I, it was, it drained a lot last week and it's been very hot. So I decided to go ahead and harvest most of that calendula in there and that gave some space to see the tomatoes so now remember last time i saw like oh i have one tomato or two garden to the go ago but actually i have lots of tomatoes <laughs> look at that they're just being covered by everything else that was growing here so that's cool i gotta come up here and start tying them up i want these tomatoes to grow over the trellis hopefully into the middle in here we'll see and let, let me show you guys actually i have some beans so i sh I, took, I took the poppies out of here and I sold some bean seeds and we have seedlings. I pre-soaked them, so this is the Scarlet Runner bean and they have sprouted already. I think I have other oh, three, yeah, there's one here too. Sorry about the shade. And the soil is looking really dry. I have to water them. We actually are going upstate this weekend, so I have to water them real fast here before I leave. Maybe it's a little too late already, but hopefully they will do well. The soil is just, I don't like when the soil is looking dry like this. So let's just go back for a second and take a look at this trough. Can I turn it around so my shadow is not in the way? But look how big it is now too. It's looking really amazing. Remember when I cut this, I cut all the way to the bottom. And now I have all these wonderful side shoots. A little bee in there. 
it's almost time to harvest them again this one looks great this one looks perfect i like to harvest them like this they will keep opening if you when you put them inside even to dry so i'm gonna show you if they're already yellow inside they will open and stay kind of like this and i don't like it don't really the look of the of the middle so some of them were open here i just cut it and put it in there but i rather cut when it's still like this so once it dries it still has the middle closed that's how i like to have them anyway i think they look very pretty and that's my personal preference and here the snapdragons are looking great <laughs> my neighbor will actually cut this one i forgot i didn't put a sign here saying that it was going to be for seed and then cut it with some root back here for a little bouquet i believe but it's okay uh no problem <laughs> you know i still have this other one here that i can save for seed hopefully and looks cool with the other side shoots blooming also and there's the same variety blooming back here that I cut the center and I have all these beautiful side shoots too. This is definitely my favorite variety. I'm thinking to only grow this Snapdragon next year. Well, let's see. I said that now in the summer and when it gets winter, I got excited and buy like a million seeds. But this is definitely my favorite one of all. And going back that way, we have the Calendula. Oh, look at this back. Yeah, she's about to open. How beautiful. Look at this color. There's some beautiful ones in my backyard too. I can't wait to show you guys. These yellow ones are nice. I still don't know what these are. Maybe this is a double daisy that never became double. I don't know because I think these other ones here are double and that one is double over there. So, oh, this one's beautiful. Show me. Oh, there's a bee in there. Oops. Yeah, the bees love them. So, the, heard back in the calendula, the bees are just everywhere here. They have been sleeping in the calendula too, which is really cute. I think they like to sleep in the flowers that close at night and calendulas do close. Oh, look at that. Just delighting themselves. I love this little area here. It turned out to be a lot better than I thought it would. This stalk is blooming again. I'm gonna cut it. And this is the same variety as Snapdragon. Gorgeous by the No, this is the Chantilly Bronze. It's all, lots of beads too. See, this bed has really been really good for the pollinators. But now check this out. I have empty space in the garden. How is that? I love actually having empty space in the garden. Think, hmm, I can plant some more new things. But this is where all the puppies were. And I need to amend the soil here before I plant. I want to plant before I leave. And I'm thinking to actually plant some okra or maybe possibly even some squash. I'm not sure if I should continue on the flowers. A lot of people want to buy the flowers. I don't want to sell them now because of the wedding. So I thought that maybe I'll put some sunflowers in there, but you see, I don't know. For sure I'm gonna do okra because I love eating okra and they grow super fast. And But I wanna do it right before I leave. Maybe next week I will at least have them as seedlings and keep watering them before we go away for a while and hopefully have them fruiting by the time we come back. I gotta cut the snapdragons here too. And I have this, uh, is this, I think this is the Mystery Rose. I forgot the name. I was on Sewa Jonis and I completely like, they went to flower and they're going to seed already. But the bees like them, so I'm leaving them, th them there. These are some asters that I planted super early and looks like they're budding. I got, I think this is the apricot. I'm not sure. When it opens, we'll see the color. And this is the scabiosa. It's finally starting to grow back there too. This is the area is looking very nice on the garden too. Have this dahlias from seed. This will be a surprise. Let's see how they're gonna look like. Some cosmos in there. Cosmos looking good. What did I see yesterday? Milkweed, I think. Yeah, I think I have a little milkweed seedling. I throw some seeds in there. Finally, the first ones that I put in there got all eaten up in like a couple of days. So hopefully that one can make it. It's looking very small now. Lots of weeds there in the back. A lot of weed. All of this. This is the echinacea. Yeah, it needs to be weeded so they have space to breed. This is Echinacea too. There's some Delphinium back there. I think that one's also uh, Marigold back there. So, and this one is uh, Porcelain Berries Invasive. I want to take this out. Someone told me I could use this in bouquets, but I don't want to bring an invasive vine upstate. So I don't know if this is root seasley or something like this. So I don't want to use that for any of our decoration for the wedding. I think I'm going to cut it out. It's pretty aggressive. So I've cut it already in the beginning and then just grew back again. And I kind of slacked, but I should be more attentive to that too. And here's the compost pile. 
It looks a lot smaller than it used to be. Uh, I'm hoping to make a video about that soon and maybe post it while we are on vacation. But something happened in here and I had to do that. And here's our little cage area with the vegetables. It's looking good in here. Um, this side especially, even though there's lots of weeds, the porcelain, it's going crazy in here. But we're not harvesting it. I'll let you guys know. Also, hopefully, <laughs> the same video that I talk about the compost. And tomatoes are looking good. Just going wide. I'm not pruning them this year. This area, so my neighbor came here and harvested the kale. So someone just asked me in the comments from last video if my neighbors actually, the owners of the plot, come in here and harvest stuff. Yes, they do. They are very generous and let me have most of the stuff. But once I got the plot when they offered me to care for the plot here they said we can give you the space and we can just start the harvest which is a great deal for me because i really was looking for to learn and you know just have the experience of gardening in a bigger scale than i have back there in my backyard here's like in ground gardening lots of different stuff so the first year he planted some things together with me second year they planted fewer things but also this year they're just like do whatever you want they usually travel in the summer for a couple months that's why they were looking for someone also to come here and take care of stuff that's why they also end up not harvesting lots of tomato and stuff like this but they really like kale and lettuce um, they told me last year they really enjoyed harvesting kale all the time and lettuce so I grew some in here for them and they are harvesting all of this I just harvest lettuce and kale for my green stock for my backyard this one is mostly for them once they travel well, well we're traveling this year too but I'll also get kale from here but I still have frozen kale from last year because I had so much and I was just looking at my freezer today I found some shredded zucchini, some frozen tomatoes, some frozen kale so I have an abundance of stuff at home too, from, even green beans from last year so they are more than welcome to eat everything that's in here and I wish actually they would harvest more they also obviously can harvest the flowers they know I am growing them for the wedding so I know they're just you know being more cautious and they come in here they harvest like here and there. I only noticed once to be honest. But you know, there's plenty of them, so if they want to have a bouquet, there's no problem at all. But they're traveling a day after our wedding, actually. So maybe when they come back they'll harvest a little bit more. But they're just very generous. I'm super grateful that they let me have most of the stuff that I grow here. So now we're going to take a walk to my backyard and see how things are looking in there. I'm super excited for the sunflower. I actually wanted to start the tour there this week but my partner Danny he parked the car in the backyard last night he has a car and he parks there once he can find parking outside hopefully he'll be up now and have moved the car and I will be able to film the second part of this garden tour now in the backyard okay, let's check how everything's doing here and check out this sunflower look at her she's always facing the side that's hard for me to film but she is bicolor. You see it's little red in the middle. Hopefully you can see with the camera. And then comes out to this orange, yellow petals. So last year I had a chocolate sunflower in there. And I thought that she was the one who dropped some seeds. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking now that she probably crossed and mixed with the other sunflowers that I had here. I had a yellow one teddy bear sunflower probably had some other ones she's very pretty I'm happy she was already open for this garden tour here in the raised bed not much difference from last week everything looks about the same well the straw flower is what I this is the stage that I think is too far I don't like harvesting like this this is okay for putting in bouquets fresh because straw flowers are a little bit like flimsy and then if you harvest them like this it's very soft and sometimes they'll flop in the vase but if you harvest like this they are a lot sturdier they usually don't flop that's my experience from last year at least but they will keep opening so i prefer to harvest them to use a dry but i like to use them like this it's definitely my favorite way so everything here is still looking nice i have a cornell bronze let me see this one, this one looks a little lighter oops i don't want to break it but things are sending they are sending a lot more stems now that i've been cutting you see how many more buds i have that's a really good thing a really good sign and here on this side i don't think i'll show this last current i was kind of rushed 
because of the rain. The spots are I'm kind of like fading everything out, so they're looking okay. I've got to cut some of the stuff in here. This guy has gone completely to seed. This bachelor button, I did. I kind of like to have to come in that head, but I moved one of the root backyards in here, and check this out. Look how gorgeous this one look. So this is the one that was living next to that green stalk over there. I wanted to put here to put something looking nice since everything else is not looking that great. And the other with back here, look at that, it's opening. Look at this gorgeous red wine color, burgundy, I'm not sure. It's so, so beautiful. I love those. This is the Sahara for sure and it's it, it can come in different colors. And this is the Double Days. I thought it was also a Sahara but maybe I got messed up with my labeling earlier. That's very nice, very exciting. Those two are very pretty. I'm thinking that maybe I'll take some of that stuff. I'll just put the two root packets in there next to eucalyptus and I will see what I'm going to do with the spots. I want to save them. I have some here still. Look at my messy area. That Because I want to plant some things for the fall. But I'm afraid to plant now because we're going to be gone for a month. It's just going to dry out. Even when someone coming to water because it's just coming for once a week. Anyway, let's move on to this side real quick. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassed of my strawberries. I did not harvest them. And they're like fermenting. I can smell them fermenting over here. But let's just pass over and look at other things. Oh, I had green beans in the plot. I forgot to show you guys. Hopefully maybe next week. There's a lot of them that are ready to harvest. I got distracted over there. But I just saw these guys here flowering and I remembered. But see, these green beans have this spider mite damage and I'm just kind of like oh, the one to deal with. The tomatoes, because it had so much rain, the leaves are not looking very great. And they have more ready to harvest. We'll harvest some today real quick after this video. I gotta take that parsley out of the green stalk and also this calendula here. I think it's looking a little bit too wild there and see if I can plant something else. The best thing in this green stalk right now are those little beautiful pansies. I love their color. They're so pretty. And I like this basil over here too. This lettuce is going to seed again. I'm gonna also try to take it out completely. Got some tomatoes in here. One there, another one that this carrot completely went to seed. And I got some more tomatoes in here and these big beans that are also all sick. It's passing to the tomatoes now. Gotta do something about that. Okay, so that's it for the backyard. I actually grabbed a little bouquet. I cut some flowers while I was waiting for Danny to move the car and I brought it home. So this was just while we added the plot right now. I ended up going back there, but I didn't bring the camera because it was very noisy. Just wanted to show you guys. And up here, nothing's looking very interesting. Basically, I've been kind of busy with wedding planning and things are kind of dying here. I have to fertilize this green stock. I haven't done that yet. At least this basil here is doing good and the shoe shard is doing good. I have said a couple this week and there's still some more. Gotta deal with these shives. So actually I want to talk a bit about this real quick because this is the perfect, this would be the perfect color palette for the wedding. Sorry I'm talking about the wedding so much, but it's just like it's something that's happening very soon to us. But I love how this look. I just literally just grabbed the flowers and put it together. I didn't even try too hard to make this look good and I think it looks really good just for the colors and the varieties in here. So. I'm really hoping more of those guys are blooming in a couple of weeks from now and I can bring a few bouquets like this upstate with us. I'm gonna end this video here. I know it's a little bit short today. We have to get going. If you missed the garden tour last week, I'm gonna put it up right over here so you can watch that next to see how the puppies look like and everything over there. And I also did a lot of harvesting in that one as well. So thank you so much for watching again. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time.